Hi, you are watching a series of videos on the art of public speaking. This video will guide you in learning how to make a great beginning in any public speech. Shortly, I'll show you three short videos showing how Barack Obama begins his speeches. Immediately after his short speeches, I'll give you an exercise. The exercise will guide you in exploring various dimensions of his way of opening speeches. It will provide you an opportunity to learn from the experience of Barack Obama and create your own style of opening. Tonight, more than 200 years after a former colony won the right to determine its own destiny, the task of perfecting our union moves forward. It moves forward because of you. It moves forward because you reaffirmed the spirit that has triumphed over war and depression, the spirit that has lifted this country from the depths of despair to the great heights of hope, the belief that while each of us will pursue our own individual dreams, we are an American family and we rise or fall together as one nation and as one people. Tonight, in this election, you, the American people, reminded us that while our road has been hard, while our journey has been long, we have picked ourselves up, we have fought our way back, and we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. I want to thank every American who participated in this election. Whether you voted for the very first time or waited in line for a very long time. By the way, we have to fix that. Whether you pounded the pavement or picked up the phone. Whether you held an Obama sign or a Romney sign, you made your voice heard and you made a difference. I just spoke with Governor Romney and I congratulated him and Paul Ryan on a hard fought campaign. We may have battled fiercely, but it's only because we love this country deeply. And we can well, thank you, everybody. Please be seated. I love you back. That is why I am here. Uh, I have to say that uh, it is one of the great honors of my life to be able to address this gathering here today. I want to thank Dr. Wilson for his outstanding leadership and the Board of Trustees. Uh, we have Congressman Cedric Richmond and Sanford Bishop, both proud alumni of this school, uh, as well as Congressman Hank Johnson and one of my dear friends and a great inspiration to us all. The great John Lewis is here. We have uh, your outstanding mayor, Mr. Kasim Reed, in the house. 
to all the members of the Morehouse family, and most of all, congratulations to this distinguished group of Morehouse men, the class of 2013. I have to say that uh, it's a little hard to follow, not Dr. Wilson, but a skinny guy with a funny name. Besiga uh, Tadella. He's going to be doing something. I also have to say that you all are going to get wet. And I'd be out there with you if I could. But Secret Service gets nervous. So I'm going to have to stay here dry. But know that I'm there with you in spirit. Some of you are graduating summa cum laude. Some of you are graduating magna cum laude. I know some of you are just graduating thank you laude. And that's appropriate because it's a Sunday. I see some moms and grandmas here, aunts, in their Sunday best, although they are upset about their hair getting messed up. <laughs> Michelle would not be sitting in the rain. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody, go ahead and have a seat. How's everybody doing today? How about Tim Spicer? I am here with students at Wakefield High School in Arlington, Virginia. And we've got students tuning in from all across America from kindergarten through 12th grade. And I am just so glad that all could join us today. And I want to thank Wakefield for being such an outstanding host. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Now, I know that for many of you, today is the first day of school. And for those of you in kindergarten or starting middle or high school, it's your first day in a new school. So it's understandable if you're a little nervous. I imagine there are some seniors out there who are feeling pretty good right now. With just one more year to go. <laughs> and no matter what grade you're in, some of you are probably wishing it were still summer and you could have stayed in bed just a little bit longer this morning. I know that feeling. When I was young, my family lived overseas. Uh, I lived in Indonesia for a few years. And my mother, she didn't have the money to send me where all the American kids went to school. But she thought it was important for me to keep up with an American education. So she decided to teach me extra lessons herself, Monday through Friday. But because she had to go to work, the only time she could do it was at 4.30 in the morning. Now, as you might imagine, I wasn't too happy about getting up that early. And a lot of times, I'd fall asleep right there at the kitchen table. But whenever I'd complain, my mother would just give me one of those looks, and she'd say, this is no picnic for me either, Buster. <laughs> so I know that some of you are still adjusting to being back at school. But I'm here today because I have something important to discuss with you. I'm here because I want to talk with you about your education, and what's expected of all of you in this new school year.